Well, Parasaurolophus is a recognizable dinosaur to us all because of that crest coming off the back of his head. It might make a lasso pretty hard to get around his neck, though. While we do have some Parasaurolophus material that's close to this size, most of it is that he's standing on two legs. That's something we know the duckbill dinosaurs could do. While they'd walk around a lot on all four, when they needed to get anywhere in a hurry or reach up high, they could rear back onto two, like you see in the Jurassic World Dominion trailer, or all the way back in the Lost World. One of the distinctive things about Parasaurolophus, and part of why I think it's so popular, is that crest on top of its head. Makes them really easy to tell apart from other duckbill dinosaurs. That might have actually been some of the idea. Lots of different Lambiosaurines, the family of duckbill dinosaur this guy's a part of, have different shaped crests on top of their head. It could be so that they could tell who was who and who you wanted to hang out with. That crest is also an extension of the nose, could have been used for making lots of noise. Some early theories got pretty crazy though, anything from it being a snorkel to help them dive deep in swamps, to a salt gland to help them drink salt water and not get poisoning from it. One of the most personally interesting shots in the movie to me was the Parasaurolophus with the snow. It's not something you usually see is dinosaurs in snow. And for Parasaurolophus, it's probably not something you would see back in the past either. The rock layers and the types of rock we find these guys in seems to show that from Alberta, Canada, all the way to southern Utah, they were living in wet, warm environments, river deltas, and maybe even swampy marshes. This is the skull of Gryposaurus, a cousin of Parasaurolophus. They actually lived at the same place and time, at least for the Parasaurolophus in southern Utah. Gryposaurus is what we call basal. It looks more like its ancestors, whereas Parasaurolophus is derived. It means it looks less like its ancestors. Uh, one of the ways that kind of sets them apart is going to be, well, the nose. Gryposaurus has quite the nose here, whereas Parasaurolophus, as we obviously saw outside, has that great big tube on the back of his head. Though his nose and that tube are made up of the same bones, the nasal and the premaxillary bone. Now the premaxilla is the very tip of the snout. It's the teeth right in the front of your face. The maxilla is back here, and that's the teeth you're going to do all your chewing with, or these guys are doing all their chewing with, too. And the nasal is pretty self-explanatory. It's your nose. But all of this up here is the premax. These guys were shoving that premaxillary bone right up the back of their head. And in extreme cases like Parasaurolophus, they got that premax so far back, it was behind their own eye sockets. The nasal is just this little bone right here. That just kind of gets drug along for the ride. <laughs> Now we've been talking a bit about that tube or the crest coming off the back of Parasaurolophus' head and it's one of the more noticeable things on him, it sets him apart. Though the ideas of what that crest was doing have changed a bit throughout history and what it would have looked like the ideas of that have changed. This one shows a flap of skin coming off the back of the crest, kind of making it like a little flag almost. The idea was that it was there to give them more space to show off with. So a lot of old paintings that have the skin flap give it bright colors and shapes and stripes, though eh, the idea of it showing off isn't that popular anymore, because it's just not that big compared to the rest of the animal. These guys are about as big as a school bus, a little area like that, just don't show off very well. So most modern reconstructions are going to have just the crest itself, like on this one, the sculptures in the park, and you'll, the ones you'll see in the movie. You can also see very well here the beak of Parasaurolophus. And it exemplifies pretty well why these guys have been nicknamed the duckbill dinosaurs. Their beaks, the front of their faces, look a lot like that of a duck, though they're using them totally differently. Duck's beaks are to help them filter out small material from water. These guys are just using those wide beaks to help them shovel as much plant material down their gullet as they can. We've only skimmed the surface on duckbill dinosaurs. I mean, we have an entire Prosaurolophus skeleton here that we didn't even mention. So if you have any questions about these guys or anything else about life in the past, feel free to come on down to the park. We'll probably have something for you to see, and we have docents you can ask to answer your questions.